My name is Oswald Berkeley Lewis, and I'm from Georgetown, Guyana. For about 20 plus years, I'm privileged to be, to be serving as an associate head deacon. I was 21 years old, appalled, mystified, eager to learn more about absenteeism because Pastor Wiggins was so overwhelming, so realistic, so pragmatic, and so enthusiastic. But man, I couldn't not say, I don't want to get baptized. And then I saw the eagerness of the Adventist young people. At first, I had to learn to really adjust to the fact that, well, you can't eat this food and that food. For example, you can't eat pork, nor shrimp, nor crab. You can't drink alcohol and all those stuff. Not that I was an alcoholic drinker. I wasn't allowed to do that at home, even though we were, we were Methodists at the time. And, but, you know, it was all my friends were. But yet, I don't know if I want to call it struggle, but I love dancing. I love, and I wondered why, you know, why I can't I dance? I don't have to wind up to dance. You know, when I can hold a female partner, and one step, two step, three step, four step, you know, so walls. And it's joy when you walls in the person can dance to or children you show, oh man, you're just moving. You're not standing, you're not sitting uh, or standing up and shaking and you know, no, you know, nothing like that. You just move around. <laughs> no. Honestly no. Because I've learned that God is stick to it. He's convincing, he's thorough, and he sticks with his word. He doesn't give up easily on us. Even though we are sinners, he's always there to prog you on. You may fall down, he doesn't allow you to stay down. His hand is there. He allow you to get up and come on. Don't give up at this. Keep going. When you do something persistently, even though you, 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 the mind tells you, no, don't go there, don't do that, God doesn't come and drag this one for you. He's there with you, watching you, egging you on, and he doesn't give up on you. He says you learn the lesson. It's better to be, to be obedient than to disobey. And you learn about it, and it's a lesson for us all. Ah, <laughs> last month, I, well, last year, I should say, I had surgery about a year ago. I had to go and have another one. And this, this, it was frightening. I was hospitalized for, in 2021 for about a year. No, no, but about 10 months, 10 months, and I was miserable. I could say it because I wondered why I should suffer. I don't think I did anything to warrant that suffering, but I learned how God was and how people who are friends or who say they are Christians are. I saw the sheep from the goat. I saw the true flag. They were always there. 
come visit, talk with you. If they couldn't come, they call you on the phone or they send a, a, a basket for you, a card or something. And the prayers, I've learned that. I've learned patience. And I've seen even the nurses and the physicians who acted different. And it, it, it hurt me in many ways. And tell me if I say who I'm supposed to be, child of God, then I need to depend on him. No. Honestly, no. I was mystified. Why should this happen to me? As far as I know, I take care of my body. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't eat what I'm not supposed to eat. Okay? And eat properly. One, he answered my prayers. My prayers for life, my prayers for more, for less pain, and for success in surgery. I am not working to get a salary financially, but the good Lord has really written, really, really showed what He can do. And prayers are answered. Um, a lot of my church members are sincere. And they pray and they, you know, offer gifts. It's wonderful. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. God is sincere. And what he says he will do, he will do. He gives us. The longest pain or rope or rod, whatever you want to have in your hand, to hold, because he has your end with it. And he encourages us to hold on. He doesn't say, I'll leave you. And even though he may be annoyed sometimes, in my opinion, he doesn't just drop us and let's, well, I don't care what happens. No. He encourages us. Because I've learned and I'm learning more and more that God is real. And He answers our prayer. Whether we're doing it quietly or boisterously, if we are sincere, God is real. We have to learn to trust Him. Trust God. No matter what is befalling you, trust Him. I have, man. Look, I broke. Recently, I had my stuff in storage, bought the stuff. And this, this, the prices went up because of what it was sold for. And I didn't know where I was going to get any help from. And they spoke. God answered. I went to my church and I talked to them and they helped me. Not financially, but with prayers and support. You know? We are in a powerful church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is not a piece of cake to play with or something you can throw around. We are we becoming more and more minute because some folks are leaving because they want the glory of outside. But God that we serve is a true God. And I encourage you, no matter what, stick with God. Stick with God. No matter how deep the hole is, stick with God. Trust Him in every way. For right is right since God is God, and right the day must win. The doubt would be disloyalty. The falter would be sin. I intend by God's grace to serve him till I die or till when he calls me. I want to see Jesus badly when he comes. I want to see him. I want to be able to be in his army and be loyal 
even if it means my death, my life. You and I need to stick with God no matter what.